Okay, so in this video, we're going to start looking at using Bode plots in order to find uh, the stability of op amps. And we're going to do that using what we call the phase margin. So here we have a Bode plot showing the frequency response, at least the amplitude response, of an op amp with a single pole. So it has a peak gain of 20 log times little a sub zero, and it has a pull frequency at omega p1. We can also draw the phase response. We know that at omega p1, the phase shift of the single pole amplifier will be exactly minus 45 degrees at 10 times this frequency. We assume that the phase shift will go to 90 degrees and at 10 times less than this, we assume that the phase shift will be zero degrees. So our phase response should look something like this if we're using our straight line approximation. Of course, we know that that really is an arc tangent and not a straight line. Now, if we configure this in a closed loop, as a closed loop system, we would assume that we would have a closed loop gain, it's represented by this blue curve that I'm drawing now. It would have a magnitude of 20 log a sub zero, a closed loop gain. And the area between these two curves that I'm filling in right now, this is actually the loop gain. So this has a transfer function of t of s. t of s is equal to little a of s times beta, as we described before. If we look at close to DC, the difference between the two curves is one plus a sub zero times beta. That's our DC loop gain. And if we look at where the two curves meet, where I just circled, this is where P of S is equal to one, or equivalently zero dB. And what we're going to generally want to look at, this is the, the place where we could have instability, is what's the phase shift at exactly this frequency? So we can plot a line down to our phase response, and we could see the angle of P of S at this particular frequency is approximately equal to minus 90 degrees. Now we know it won't be exactly 90 degrees because the arc tangent only approaches 90 degrees at infinity, but it'll be pretty darn close to minus 90 degrees as you're on. So what we are doing when we're finding phase margin is we're finding the angle of P of S or little a of s times beta, when the magnitude of t of s, or little a of s times beta, is equal to 1. So we can say minus 90 plus or minus 180 degrees is not equal to 0 degrees, or n times 360 degrees. So we can generally say that this one whole op amp is stable. We can look at phase shift at that frequency plus 180 degrees is equal to 90 degrees. This is our phase margin. In other words, we're 90 degrees away from a condition where we would have zero degrees of, uh, of phase shift or a multiple of 360 degrees of phase shift, which would mean that we would have positive feedback. This means that we have 90 degrees of phase margin to get to that number. Now let's make a few notes about single pole op amps. For single pole op amps, feedback can never reach minus 180 degrees, meaning that the loop gain can never reach minus 180 degrees unless beta 
has a frequency dependence. Generally, beta has a very small frequency dependence, so we consider that. So what we can say about op-amp circuits using single pole op-amps is that uh, with non-frequency dependent beta is that they are always stable. Now, the types of op-amps that give us a single or at least a very dominant uh, pole are a fully differential op-amp or our cascode op-amps that we've been looking at. Now, we showed the other day that when we look at a at a uh, at a op amp loaded with a current mirror that we actually have two poles one at the mirror node and one at the output node uh, those poles are generally far apart uh, so generally the uh, op amp will be uh, stable but that's not always the case now when the frequency response has multiple poles so let's look at an example so here we have a three pole op amp. We have three poles in the denominator. Omega P1 times one plus A beta, omega P2 and omega P3. We'll generally say that omega P1 is less than omega P2 is less than omega P3. In this case, we have three poles. We can have a total of 270 degrees of phase shift because of this. And in this case, the op amp has the potential to be unstable if the poles are too close together, for instance. Now we have a concept of phase margin to be able to evaluate whether or not the amplifier is stable. If the phase margin is greater than zero degrees, the amp is stable. However, even a stable amplifier might ring if it's input with a step response. If we input a step response when the phase margin is 45 degrees, we'll get fast settling. And if we input a, a step response when the phase margin is 60 degrees, uh, we'll get a critically damped uh, response. What we mean by critically damped for the 60 degree phase margin is that the output won't overshoot the desired target. Now, we're looking for phase margin uh, to find 180 degrees plus the angle of the loop gain and we're looking specifically for the frequency the, the angle of the loop gain at the frequency where the magnitude of the loop gain goes to unity now we can also look at gain margin gain margin is 20 times the log of the magnitude of the loop gain at a frequency where the angle of the loop gain is equal to plus or minus 180 degrees. So what we're checking here is when we actually have a phase shift of 180 degrees from our loop gain, do we have any gain left over? If, the, if we do, then the amplifier could be unstable. Now our gain margin needs to be less than zero dBs or stability. All right, in the next set of videos, we're going to start looking at multipole op amps and look to see how uh, we know that they can be unstable. So we're going to look to see how we can guarantee that they remain stable. We'll do that in the next videos.